One of life's little pleasures. Freshly baked warm bread. Now, the guys behind me reckon they can't bake. I beg to differ. Join us as we get baking. Making bread is simple. I'm going to show you how to make a very basic loaf, a bloomer, a good British bloomer. Have you made bread before? No. Kind, kind of tried. <laughs> how did it turn out? <laughs> Terrible. Why? Soggy, nasty, oily, not very nice at all. Russell and Patrick are partners and really want to make a loaf that can be proud of. Did you actually put it in the oven? I did eventually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I left it in the oven whilst it was cooling down and it was a complete fail. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Have you made bread? I've done an attempt with my daughter, right. but we undercooked it. It looked great. And when we cut into it, it was, what, yeah. Raw dough? Pretty much, yeah. Kim and Kate are friends from Devon. Both bake cakes, but clearly need my help on the bread front. What I'm going to show you now, it is a bloomer, because I think bloom is a good starter for a free-form loaf. What I've got here is strong white flour. We can actually make bread with plain flour or cake flour, but it just turns out very dry, very brittle, breaks very, very easily. But strong white flour has got more protein, which gives it the bloom, gives it that strength in the bubble to allow it to grow and create a lovely structure inside the loaf. That's the reason why we use, you know, a bread flour rather than a cake flour. First, I'm adding a touch of salt to the flour. Now, I'm using fast-action yeast. Now, at 15 years, I use the fresh yeast, which is fine, but it's difficult to get hold of. It stinks your fridge out, lasts two weeks. Next, I'm adding olive oil and cool tap water. Don't kid yourself thinking, if I add warm water, then it's going to be quicker. It will, but to the detriment of the flavour. So the longer you prove a loaf, the better it is. Add the water a little at a time and feel the mixture as it comes together. I'm looking for a soft, sticky dough. And you can feel how soft that dough is. Mm. It's a lot stickier than I thought it would be. Yeah. Like when I do it, I tend to put loads of flour on it and I think that's yeah. where I go that, wrong. Well, yeah. yeah, most people make that fatal error actually. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is pop that onto a bench and use, as opposed to flour on the bench, I'm gonna use olive oil. Olive oil is good for basically keeping your bench nice and tidy. It's quite a lot, isn't it? No, you need it in. Yeah. Are you arguing? She's arguing. <laughs> Are you arguing me already? Right, you've got your dough here. Just fold it around and then begin to manipulate this into one ball. It's time for the students to focus on my kneading technique. All right, so all I'm doing is heel of the palm, fingers holding the base slightly just so I've got some resistance. And you can see even after a couple of turns, because once you've rolled it up, you're turning it a quarter, rolling it up, turning it. You can see how smooth that is now. Hope you're concentrating at home. See how smooth that is now. You pop it in and just manipulate it. I give it to my boy, you know, he's, he's what, 12 now. And he enjoys doing this. And if you've got several kids, split yeah. it up and give it to them. Just let them play with it and then just bring it all together. In fact, they do the job for you. <laughs> if you feel that, just pass it around. Yeah. Stretch it, you can feel the elasticity in there already. Mm -hmm. Is there a, like, a specific Now, don't, don't turn it. You see, you're turning no, like, it as well. Yeah. Just keep it in one place. Yeah, nice. Just fold it up. Kate's nearly got it. What about Kim? You're too hard. Here we go. <laughs> see, you're going this now. way now. What are you doing, <laughs> It's sticky. You try it. <laughs> don't be scared. That's cheating. <laughs> I'll do it slowly. Do yes. it slowly. OK, so one. Yeah. Where's one? I don't know. You haven't done one yet. You haven't done one. <laughs> one pull and then back, yeah. back. That's it. Back. That'll do. And then two. That's it. Ah. Russell's got it. Now for Patrick's turn. Yeah. So the idea is to have the crease then yeah. towards you. That's right. Okay. That's it. You see, you're making sure that every piece is getting yeah. done. Well done. So once you've done this, and to be honest, we've been doing this for hours. You can see it goes nice and smooth, and it actually, it's got no breaks in it, so already it's nice and smooth top. Now put the dough away to prove until it's at least doubled in size. You end up with a dough like this, right? Now that's light, it's got air in it already, right? If I open that up, you can see the strands, that's the gluten. Wow. That's the gluten that's been formed. So what you end up with is a dough that's got, that's got air in it, and you need to smack that air out of it. Why do you punch the air out of it? 
you're making an even structure in the loaf. So otherwise you end up big bubble, small bubble, and it, it oh, okay. look, looks irregular. So you flatten it all down at this stage. And then using your thumb and your fingers and your heel of your palm, you roll it up. Okay? Now, you end up with one seam down the middle like that. Yeah. That's key. If you're going to do a tin, that would just go in a tin like that, yeah. seam side down. Yeah. But because you're making a bloomer, you need to tighten or sharpen around those ends off. Right, let's see how my students do. The key thing when shaping a bloomer is to have the crease of the dough underneath and to fold in the ends so they're round. That's the classic bloomer shape. Then again, you need to leave it to double in size. You've knocked the air out of, your, uh, out of the dough, but now you need to put the air back in. This one has now rested and doubled in size, and the yeast has been busy filling the dough with air. And you can see that it's risen and like a bubble. If it's been kneaded properly and shaped properly, then as it proves, it proves that way mm. and not that way. And so you end up with something that's light, airy. Here's a top tip. Spray a little water over the surface. It will help with the shine. Dust it with flour and rub it all over. This is what gives the bloomer its classic rustic look. Now using a short serrated knife, Cut on an angle across the loaf, nice and deep, to give it that classic bloomer look. And you can see it's got tension in the loaf, so when you cut it, it opens up. You see it just opens up slightly. As that goes into the oven, because you've got the flour on the top and you've got no flour in the middle, the distinction between the, the top of the mountains and the valleys, if you like, will be strong and it'll look very attractive. Bake the loaf at 200 degrees Celsius for 25 minutes then drop the oven to 180 degrees and bake for a further 15. Make sure you have a tray of water below the loaf to create steam. Now what's going to happen is that will now begin to cook. The steam will evaporate and coat the top of the bread with a lovely crispy shine. Our classic white bloomer loaves have baked and are looking promising. They look interesting and really nice. There's big differences in yes. how they look. First, Patrick's loaf. You see the bubbles on here, that's an indication that there's water in the oven when you see, but it's a good thing. Moving on to this one, Russell, is this yes, yours? That's mine. It's got a nice, it's got a nice feel to it. Oh, yeah. That's a nice looking loaf. It's chewy, I can feel its tension. Happy with it? I am. Next, it's Kate's bloomer. Very good. You see the line down here? That's the line that you kept in the middle. And that that's that's a good thing. And you've managed to get the the angle, you've got a good bit of depth in there as well between the two. Very good. Now, this one, this is Katie. You probably cut it actually right, but it's all gone to one side. And the reason why it's, it's all gone to one side is basically because of the crease mark here. What happens is it flips it all over. But overall, I mean, as a loaf goes, you went into you know a bakery and saw that sitting on the shelf. You go, oh, I'll have one of them, please. Have you got the bug now? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's how easy it is. Good flour, a little bit of salt, a little bit of oil, a little bit of yeast, a little bit of time. Don't rush it, and you end up with a beautiful loaf. It's as simple as that. <laughs>